Is your profile strong enough to get into UC Berkeley? You can find out by calculating your chances of admission at UC Berkeley and other schools with your free CollegeVine account. Start by completing your chancing profile with information such as your GPA, test scores, and extracurricular activities. From there, you can use CollegeVine's hub tool to see your chances and information about the school, such as cost, majors, and more. Visit the link in the description below to sign up and see your chances today. An expectation that a lot of people have when they come to Berkeley is that, you know, they won't have time for anything besides studying. And the reality of this is that this is true to a certain degree. Um, a lot of Berkeley classes do require a lot of time dedicated to studying and classwork, but most students at Cal um, also have a lot of time for different extracurriculars, internships, sports, etc. Um, another ex expectation is that the exams are going to be brutal and that basically no one gets an A. And the reality of this is that um, the severity of, of exams and midterms depends a lot on the different courses and departments that you're in. Obviously, exams are um, notoriously difficult and grade deflation is real, but it definitely does depend on your major. And some classes do have a decent percentage of A's. So kind of to sum up this point about studying and expectations, um, a lot of your time will definitely go into schoolwork, classwork, studying, but you will also have a lot of time for extracurriculars and things of the like. Um, okay, let's see. Hopefully, okay. Um, and then, now let's talk about a little bit about classroom culture. So UC Berkeley has a reputation for being a lot more competitive slash cutthroat than certain other UCs. And I like to stress the point that this is more of a, an expectation or um, kind of a misconception rather about Berkeley. Berkeley students aren't uh, less willing to help other students and collaborate than at other schools. It's actually the opposite. I feel like Berkeley um, students are just very success oriented at a school with limited resources for the many, many students that there are here. Uh, the resources are still out there though. You just have to work harder to get them. So yeah, I think a lot of classes especially in STEM are like labeled as being more competitive or cutthroat, but that's definitely not the case for, for, you know, most classes and most people that I've talked to have not experienced that. Um, it just is, most people are, are pretty success oriented and, and driven in that way. All right, let's see. Okay. Uh, going along with the classroom experience, so the initial classes to satisfy prereqs can be really large. For example, CS61A has almost over 2,000 students. Another big class is Data 8 that also has 1,000 plus students. And uh, during non-COVID times, those classes would normally be held in Zellerbach Hall, which is a huge auditorium. And most of those are recorded and, you know, you can watch them after, obviously, because of COVID-19, every class is recorded um, and fully online this year. Uh, and I say that, you know, these classes, the prereq classes are very large, which can seem daunting, but most upper division courses and a lot of freshman and sophomore classes actually are under 50 students. And with those larger classes, the ones that, you know, have a couple hundred, uh, you know, even thousand plus students, they, all of those classes have smaller sections that you are going to have to attend. And those, those sections are usually 30 to 40 students, sometimes 20 students. Um, it all just depends. And those you take with GSIs who are graduate student instructors. A lot of other places, they, you know, you'd call them TAs. Uh, the actual ratio for student to staff at Berkeley is 18 to 1, which is pretty impressive considering how large of a school it is. Um, okay. And then there's also many different resources to help you in classes, such as the SLC, which is the Student Learning Center, and then also the Graduate Student Instructor and Professor Office Hours, which I think are something that is very beneficial to attend. I know that a lot of people, 
I know for certainly my freshman year, I didn't take advantage of them as much, but this year I'm, I'm starting to go to a lot more office hours and I see how useful they are, especially with, um, you know, when there are so many students in a class, going to office hours is a good way to get to know your professor and show that you are really interested and dedicated to the course, especially if you might want a rec letter from them in the future or if you uh, are intending to be that major that they're teaching. Okay, so we have a question here, which is, do counselors or other advisors provide opportunities for internships? So I will get to this in a little bit. And about this, I'd say that counselors and advisors are more there to help you figure out your, your class schedules. They're not really there to be the ones that are, you know, sending emails about opportunities for internships that aren't through Berkeley really. Um, I'd say for those types of opportunities, I would join perhaps, you know, if you're interested in business, like a pre-business or, um, you know, a business club or a pre-business fraternity or uh, go to events that are labeled, you know, pre-law or, uh, you know, pre-med school uh, type events. And I think those would definitely give you a better gauge. Also talking to older students. And if you join any clubs, there definitely is, um, I found will be a plethora of information about um, certain opportunities and such. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, okay, continuing on. So talking about professors and the attention that you'll get from professors depends on the department. So again, as I mentioned, like a class that is huge at Berkeley is CS61A. And the computer science department in general is pretty big. So, you know, your interaction with your professor might not be super high, like you might not really get to interact with your actual professor very much but you will get to interact with your GSIs quite often they're there to answer your questions and are there specifically to help you so that's what I'll say on that front and then as far as you know the caliber I guess you could say of professors at Cal they all enjoy teaching they're all interesting people who enjoy talking to students they like what they're teaching um, and many of them are top names in their field. So there are, funnily enough, there are literally parking spots for, that says, you know, Nobel laureate, like Nobel prize winner and at Berkeley because a lot of our professors uh, do hold such prestigious titles. Um, so yeah, uh, continuing on, Berkeley professors, again, hold many notable awards, but beyond the numbers, even professors who teach large classes are accessible outside of class to help students through office hours. And most of them are very willing to engage to speak to students after or before class as well. Um, all right, continuing on. Okay, continuing on talking about studying and expectations. UC Berkeley is a rigorous school for sure. Uh, and you will have a lot of work. So I touched on this previously, you know, it's not like your all your time necessarily is going to be taken up with studying and such, but you will have a lot of work. And depending on your major, you should definitely give yourself more time than you think you will need for any project, any, ass any assignment, especially going into your freshman year of college, because you're not going to be used to, or most of you probably won't be used to the degree of work that there is with college and specifically Berkeley courses. Uh, the most important thing is to study to, is to stick to a schedule for studying and homework. And if you do that, then it's definitely doable. There's a lot of resources, as I mentioned before, GSI and uh, professor office hours, the student learning center that are resources on campus to help you. Another thing I'd say is your freshman year, be realistic in choosing your classes. You know, you don't wanna enter your freshman year and take 20 units. I personally don't, you know, think I will ever take 20 or more units. Um, it just is not super feasible for me with all the different clubs and such that I do. So just be realistic in choosing your classes because, you know, it's better to pace yourself coursework wise than, you know, overload yourself and realize, oh, I, I can't do this, especially your freshman year. And in your counselors and advisors will tell you that too. Um, and final point on this front is that professors and peers are there to help you. So just keep that in mind. They are not the enemy. You know, it might seem like that sometimes in college, but uh, they really are there to help you. 
Um, okay, continuing on about other academic opportunities at Cal. So there's a multitude of research opportunities at Cal, even in humanities, including student initiated research. So this is a point that I wanna to touch on. Berkeley is a research school. It's a very good research school. And uh, any professor that you find interesting, any research that you might wanna do, I'm sure mo more often than not, there will be someone, there will be a professor who wants or who is doing that or who will be willing to help you uh, initiate that research. Other programs include the Haas Scholars Program, the College of Engineering Summer Program, um, Berkeley Summer Bioengineering Program, uh, you know, UC uh, program in DC. There's a lot of different other academic opportunities as well.